read it again if you want to. Okay. She seemed cut off from everyone and everything by walls of agony, and the sense of the solitude of each human soul suddenly overwhelmed me. Ever since my marriage, my emotional life had been calm and superficial. I had forgotten all the deeper issues and become content with flippant cleverness. Suddenly, the ground seemed to give way beneath me, and I found myself in quite another region. Within five minutes, I went through some reflections as the following. The loneliness of the human soul is unendurable. Nothing can penetrate it except the highest intensity of the sort of love that religious teachers have preached. Whatever does not spring from this motive is harmful, or at best useless. It follows that war is wrong, that a public school education is abominable, that the use of force is to be depreciated, and that in human relations one should penetrate to the core of loneliness in each person and speak to that. At the end of those five minutes, I had become a completely different person. For a time, a sort of mystical illumination possessed me. I felt that I knew the innermost thoughts of everybody that I met in the street, and though this was no doubt a delusion, I did in fact actually find myself in far closer touch than previously with all of my friends and many of my acquaintances. I feel like that's where I related the most, right there. Yeah. Like, I can just, yeah. like, just, that sense. Uh, yeah. And like, I've definitely felt that. Mo a lot of the time, I wish I was like that. More than yeah, I, it's definitely not all the time. I mean, no, I mean most of the time, you're not like that at all. Mm -hmm. But it would be so much better if you were. It seems like it. To I me. don't know, maybe. Man. Having been an imperialist, I became during those five minutes a pacifist. Having for years cared only for exactness and analysis, I found myself with, filled with semi-mystical feelings about beauty with an intense interest in children, and with a desire almost as profound as that of the Buddha to find some philosophy which would make human life endurable. A strange excitement possessed me, containing intense pain, but also some element of triumph through the fact that I could dominate pain and make it, as I thought, a gateway to wisdom. The mystic insight which I then imagined myself to possess has largely faded, and the habit of analysis has reasserted itself. But something of what I thought I saw in that moment has remained always with me, causing my attitude during the First War, my interest in my children, my indifference to minor misfortunes, and certain emotional tone in all my human relations. Remember when we were talking about the um, love being universal? Yes. That section reminded me of what he was thinking there. I'm going to look for that again. I don't remember where it was. I am... It was justice and uh, love. It's the it's towards the end, and it's the paragraph that starts with uh, the mind which has become accustomed to the freedom and impartiality. Justice and emotion is that universal love which can be given to all, and not only to those who are judged useful or admirable. Thus, contemplation enlarges not only the objects of our thoughts, but also the objects of our actions and affections. It makes us citizens of the universe, not of one walled city at war with all the rest. In the citizenship of the universe consists man's true freedom and his liberation from the thraldom of narrow hopes and fears. Back when... Uh, I can trace back to this to a similar experience happening to me and a similar philosophy appearing from that that uh you made a video about it i don't think i did not no. necessarily that experience but you made a video about feeling i did that. yeah that one that one the, and that this is probably your, this is the experience your, that i haven't told anybody about yet on the cast but I found out that this this girl that I don't know you you, you I can't be sure I'm young and stuff but I was I loved her and uh, I don't know if I still do which or girl, not which girl, which girl, which girl, which girl? I don't I don't you don't you've never heard of her probably I don't never have. maybe I don't know if uh, I really didn't even know her but I loved her, and maybe I do. But 
as it turned out, she had a uh, incurable genetic disease, and uh, she's she she lives not so pleasant a life due to that, and uh, even with the medication, her lifespan will be around twenty five years old. And uh, just when Huntington's? huh? Huntington's? No, what whatever you said, I can't tell exactly what you said, but. It's called alpha one Huntington's disease. Huh? Huntington's disease is a no. neurological disorder that's incurable and reduces the lifespan to twenty five years. No, it's not that one, but it is alpha one antitrypsin deficiency. Okay. And uh, just that part, same thing. Seeing somebody, you know, like walls of agony, kind of. That's not how I would describe her at all, but. She needed an organ donation, but there weren't any organs for her. And it seems like they're not going to be, because she said she's been on the list for a while, and she has the lowest probability due to her blood type being O negative and other things. 9% of people in the world are O negative. I definitely know what he means when he's talking about the indifference to minor misfortunes. Like, uh, or just around the time and forever after that, I, I noticed how people would, like, I don't know, their moods would change depending on minor misfortunes, you know, or even larger misfortunes. But I just kind of thought if, if you were 40 years old or 60 years old or a year from now, if, will you even remember this? Like, you stubbed your toe or something, or you got sick with the cold, or I don't know, you know, something in traffic but it's it doesn't even matter why are you getting upset about that forget about it or you know you use it to your advantage or whatever but they you should be indifferent to minor misfortunes